Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, the top 10 fast facts about the James Bond franchise. Are you a James Bond fan? If so, not really surprised. There's something simply cool and fun about a James Bond movie. Not only does he save the day, and usually the entire world, secretly of course, but he also gets a great car, gadgets, and a beautiful woman. But while you may have stood in line for the latest Bond movie, we doubt you know everything about them. In the video today, we're looking at some facts that even the most enthusiastic 007 followers might not know. Number 10. You have one very dedicated family to thank for the franchise. Obviously, a lot of people have been involved in the making of the Bond films over the years, but there's one family in particular that's been the driving force behind keeping them going for decades. The Broccoli family has produced James Bond movies since 1975. These movies are truly a family affair, with Albert R. Broccoli, who produced until 1984 when his stepson Michael G. Wilson came onto the board. Then, in 1995, Broccoli let his daughter, Barbara Broccoli, take over the production of the James Bond franchise. So now, two generations of the Broccoli family has managed the Bond films, bringing us hours of fantastic entertainment. Number 9. Ian Fleming didn't get rich on the first movie. The Bond franchise is certainly a cash cow, I mean, there's a reason they keep churning out new ones. But author Ian Fleming didn't exactly rake in the dough on the first movie adaptation. Not even close, actually. But then the movie wasn't exactly a blockbuster either. In 1954, CBS paid Fleming $1,000 to obtain the rights to turn his first Bond novel, Casino Royale, into a one-hour show. This was part of a series called Climax Mystery Theatre. The show featured Barry Nelson as James Bond and Peter Law as the villain Le Chiffre. It was shown to TV audiences on October the 21st, 1954. Number 8. The biggest box office hit in the franchise might not be what you think. If we asked you what the biggest smash hit financially in the James Bond franchise is, you might immediately think of the Daniel Craig version of Casino Royale, or maybe it's even Goldeneye. But, well, it's neither of those. In fact, Casino Royale actually only ranks fourth on the list, and Goldeneye, well, that's a distant eighth. The top earner, well, it would be Skyfall, which was released on November the 8th, 2012. The domestic box office in the USA was $304,360,277. That's more than a hundred million more than the second highest grossing movie, which is Spectre. The international box office was truly phenomenal, with more than a billion dollars being raked in. The Bond movies have been super successful and have generated over seven billion dollars with their international box office totals. Number 7. Enjoy Daniel Craig as Bond while you can. Daniel Craig wasn't the obvious choice when he got cast as Bond prior to Casino Royale. He didn't have the same suave, dark-haired look of Roger Moore or Piers Brosnan, so naturally some fans were skeptical. And then, of course, people saw him in the film, and almost immediately the debate was opened up about whether he was a better Bond than Sean Connery. However, you probably won't be seeing him in the role much longer. The next James Bond film will be released on November the 8th, 2019. This is the final film, currently dubbed Bond 25, that Craig has been contracted for. Craig has been working on a TV show and was originally reluctant to do the last Bond movie, but it's great that he didn't want to disappoint his enthusiastic fans. Number 6. That 2019 Bond film is still a total mystery. While it's certainly great that Daniel Craig is returning to the role one last time, that's about all we know about the film at this point. The movie has not been without a few bumps, though. Pregnancy bumps, that is, because production was pushed back because Craig wanted to help his wife, Oscar winner Rachel Weisz. Just last year, they were searching hard to find a great director, and that is the one piece of info that we do have. The newest Bond movie is going to be helmed by acclaimed director Danny Boyle, who is the man behind films like Trainspotting, 28 Days Later, and Slumdog Millionaire. He's also won an Oscar, by the way. For now, though, we simply have to wait for more information. Number 5. Sometimes Bond's gadgets have given us a window into the future. Many of Bond's gadgets are pure entertainment and just add to the adventure, but sometimes they seem to be a peek into the future, a peek into the gadgets that we're one day going to have. The 1985 movie A View to Kill featured a ring camera. Today, tiny cameras can be placed just about anywhere. But in the 1980s, the thought of that technology being that tiny was simply unheard of. In that same movie, there was also a cute robot dog. And today, of course, you can buy all sorts of adorable little robots robot pets, including cats and dogs. In the 2008 movie Quantum of Solace, there was a multi-touch table similar to using a very large tablet. It's the size of a table that about six people can use. Nowadays, you can easily see large screens which people can move documents around on with simply the touch of a finger. Number 4. Sean Connery wasn't very 007 when it came to playing Bond. 
Some of the actors who played James Bond have done plenty of their own stunts. One of the actors who refused to do any type of stunt, though, might surprise you. Well, unless you heard the title, because of course it's Sean Connery. As his fellow Bond, George Lazenby, noted, Sean Connery wouldn't step down a step without saying stuntman. Now, let's be fair, some of those Bond stunts are a bit daunting. I mean, it's easy for us to make a quick judgment from our comfy, plush movie seats while munching on buttery popcorn. Then again, you'd think the dashing guy who played Bond, and also was a Mr. Universe competitor, would at least be up for racing a car, skiing down a hill, or, you know, just a few small adventures. Number 3. The first big screen Bond was a real player, and not just on screen. You may not know who George Lazenby is, but he's the guy who briefly played Bond in one movie, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. And while he didn't play Bond for long, he sure lived the James Bond lifestyle. He estimates he was intimate with more than a thousand women, and during the peak of his fame, he seduced an average of five women every day. He credits his luck with the ladies to being a good-looking Australian and also having the confidence to approach them. In fact, we think Lazenby was chock-filled with confidence in lots of ways, because it might surprise you to learn that he got the role of James Bond with absolutely zero acting experience. Number 2. Can you spot the 1963 Aston Martin DB5? Everyone knows that part of the fun of watching Bond movies is not just the adventure, but also the cars and the cool gadgets that Bond has. It might surprise you to know that one Aston Martin car has popped up in six James Bond movies, making it quite unique. Typically, in the movies, a car or a gadget only appears once. Even more amazing is the fact that its appearances have spanned decades. The 1963 Aston Martin DB5, your first see in Goldfinger, 1964, and then in Thunderball 1965. It also reappeared more recently in Goldeneye 1995, Tomorrow Never Dies 1997, Casino Royale 2006, and the super popular Skyfall from 2012. So it's easy to say that the Aston Martin is James Bond's car. While he drives many others, this is certainly one of his favorites. Number 1. So, who's going to be the next Bond? Many fans are hoping that Daniel Craig will stay on in the role of James Bond, and it has been rumored that he has been offered $150 million for another two films. But eventually, he's going to hang up that wall for PPK, and someone else will need to step into the role, so who might it be? Names that have been included in entertainment magazines, on social media, and throughout internet message boards include actors like Idris Elba, Damian Lewis, Aidan Turner, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hardy, or Jamie Bell. For now, though, we're just going to have to continue to speculate and wait and see who slides into the black tux and orders a martini, shaken, not stirred, of course. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every single day. Also, I've got a podcast, and it's called Brain Food. It's got educational, entertaining content just like this. It's a bit longer form and goes into a lot of depth on a specific subject, getting into all of the fascinating little details. You can check it out through the link in the description below, or just search your favorite podcast app for Brain Food. If you like this YouTube channel, you are sure to love that podcast. But if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out a related video? video from the Top 10's archives over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.